Xiaomi is Mi 11, the first Snapdragon 888 phone, 2021's flagship Qualcomm chip for at least the first half of the year. It's here. Today we are going to be seeing it in action. So what else do we get with Xiaomi's latest flagship? Well, let's unbox this phone and then take a close look. Hey guys, Ash here from C4 Retech and if you hate brands removing chargers from phone boxes, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon. Well, it's not gonna make a lick of difference on if brands are gonna include chargers or not in the box. It is gonna make me feel warm and fuzzy all over. So that's a good thing. Go ahead, do it and thanks in advance. So it's true, it's damn true for those optimists hoping against hope. Hoping not only is the Mi 11 the first phone to sport the Snapdragon 888, but it's also the first Android phone to join Apple's iPhones in shipping without a charger. Android manufacturers want consumers to not be Apple sheep and go for Android instead. But it is so hypocritical of them that they happen to be the biggest Apple sheep. They follow every dick move Apple makes. Oh, shut up. No one wants to listen to you rant. You know they are providing the charger separately, right? Just because you bought it from a third party seller and you didn't get it does not mean Xiaomi is not giving it. Yes, they wanted to not give it, but then they backtracked. So how about you shut up and get back okay. to the unboxing? Okay, fair enough. Let's now get to the Mi 11. We now have a slimmer box with bronzed Mi and 11 branding. Some highlights are mentioned to the bottom. We have Xiaomi and Xiaomi 11 branding all, all around. And an information sticker to the back that says this is the 8128 variant in blue. Let's once again take that prop knife and cut through the plastic. Opening up the box, we are greeted by this white insert as we usually are. And just like we've seen with many a phone in the past, this one contains a SIM ejector pin, an information booklet and a soft case. Xiaomi is continuing with this tradition of providing a soft case with their phones in the box. And I really appreciate that, especially given the glass pack. And now for the main event, meet the Xiaomi Mi 11. Let's take it out of its protective wrap. I've been waiting to get my hands on this phone and I can't wait to start playing around with it. Let's also get a sticker to the back. This blue looks really nice, doesn't it? We have a blue to white hue here, purple to the sides. Xiaomi is kicking ass with the looks. I absolutely adore this. By the way, Xiaomi also sells a leatherback version, which I will be getting my hands on soon. It seems to be a very exciting design. So let me know if you want to see a video on it. So moving on to the other box contents. Well, we have no other box contents. Even Apple provided a USB to lightning cable. We don't even get that here. I said no USB cable. Okay, it is now time for us to take a closer look at the Mi 11. The first thing you notice is that Xiaomi has gone all out here. No compromises with the belt. The front is covered by Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus. The back is also Gorilla Glass and the frame it's metal. Note how both the front and back curve at the edges. So you kind of get this premium 3D curve on both sides. If you aren't a fan of curved displays and feel the reflections are way too distracting, you're not going to be happy here because that's exactly what we get. Now, before we talk display, let's just uh, touch upon a few other build aspects. This back has a frosted finish, so it doesn't pick up smudges quite as easily as glossy glass. Uh, here, we also find a triple camera setup that we will get to in a bit. Now, the placement is standard Xiaomi power and volume keys to the right, which are nice and elevated, very tactile. IR blaster, secondary mic and secondary speaker up top. So yes, we do get stereo speakers. Also note the faint sound by Harman Kardon branding. To the left, well, it's left clean. And we have the dual SIM tray, USB type C port, primary microphone and speaker residing at the bottom. From a form factor perspective, the Mi 11 shares almost the same length and breadth measurements as its predecessor while managing to be slimmer and lighter. And it's not like they've reduced the display, display size or anything. It's actually grown here. It's 6.81 inches compared to 6.67 on the Mi 10. Now this, how they've managed to keep the form factor this way is due to the bezels being slimmed down further and also the aspect ratio changing from 19.5 by 9 to 20 by 9. Now it's not just the size that's increased. Almost every other stat's gotten an upgrade. Resolution, now that's up to Quad HD Plus from Full HD Plus. The refresh rate, 120Hz from 90Hz. Maximum brightness, even that's increased. With HDR10 Plus support, brightness on parts of the screen can go as high as 1500 nits during HDR playback. Now, everything I've mentioned here might just seem like numbers, but even practically, looking at this panel, you will notice a difference. It is not just an on-paper thing. That is what I'm trying to say here. 
This display is excellent. It gets an A plus rating from DisplayMate, which is the highest score they have on offer. The Mi 11 set or match 13 display performance records on the DisplayMate database. Uh, this is an interesting article. I'll leave a link to it in the description. Do check it out if you wanna. Now, one thing worth mentioning is that I do find the corners a little weird. What do you think? Is it just me? Do you see it too? Let me know in the comments. Now, this is still very much Super AMOLED, so it's pretty rich, vibrant, and the improvements that we've seen so far, along with the stereo speakers, means I can't wait to spend more time with the Mi 11. And talking about can't wait, if you can't wait to get your hands on a Mi 11, you can buy one from, yes, you guessed it right, our sponsor for this video, 28mobile.com. If there's any phone that's not available in your market, or I mean, you, if you just can't wait to get your hands on something, 28mobile.com is your friend. Check out their extensive collection of phones. I'll leave a link to 28mobile.com in the description. Do check them out if you haven't yet. Now, the reason why Xiaomi is confident enough to up the resolution and refresh at the same time uh, with this iteration of their flagship is because of the chip inside. This here is Qualcomm Snapdragon 888. It's their first 5 nanometer chip. Yes, admittedly, they've been slow uh, to come to jump onto 5 nanometers. But ever since the horror show that was the Snapdragon 810, if you remember with uh, Apple and even MediaTek jumping to 64 bit, Qualcomm tried to match them, rushed the chip. It ended up having a lot of uh, heating issues, uh, throttling issues. It was bad to the point where certain brands like LG refused to use it in their flagships. Certain brands like OnePlus ended up underclocking the chip. So it was a huge issue, but ever since then, uh, Qualcomm's been slow to move towards things, but they've been pretty refined. Their products end up being quite good, as in their uh, chips, SOCs end up being quite good. And in my experience so far with the Mi 11, everything felt fluid more so than usual. So this seems to be a solid flagship chip inside. And this is a Mi UI 12 running on top of Android 11. Mi UI 12.5 should be dropping soon. Now, the ads aspect, it's been discussed to death, so I'm not going there. Uh, Xiaomi's new MIUI features like the control center and the option to switch to uh, switch to an app drawer, they are present here. Other long-time favorites like Always On, Return with Certain Tweaks. By the way, if you want to drop the resolution from uh, Quad HD Plus to Full HD Plus, you can do that. Or if you want to switch the refresh rate uh, from 120Hz to 60Hz, MIUI lets you do that too. Uh, there is uh, some AI functionality as well that Xiaomi's included. This is super resolution. Uh, this is supposed to help upscale images and videos to up to 1440p. So even if what you're seeing is not actually 1440p, this should help make it look a little more detailed. Similarly, there's interpolation of frames to make things appear smoother. Uh, then there is image enhancement, HDR enhancement. There's a lot of, there's a lot of features that Xiaomi is offering. Now, if you are into gaming, you'd like the Game Turbo option. It's similar to pretty much every other game space implementation we've seen. Uh, then there is a floating window function. Xiaomi seems to want to leverage all that horsepower, put it to good use. So how do these implementations actually fare? Are they good, bad, ugly? I'll continue testing this phone out. I'll have more to say in my full review. So what else? Oh yeah, wrapping up the specs portion of this video, Xiaomi offers 8 and 12 gig RAM options to go along with 128 and 256 gig storage options. This is UFS 3.1 by the way. The battery capacity is 4600 milliamp hour, so it's slightly lesser than what we had with the Mi 10. That said, there is support for faster charging. It's 55 watts. Of course, this is a proprietary charger that should help you get from 0 to 100 in about 45 minutes. Now, you don't need to use this proprietary charger if you just want to charge a little faster. Uh, not as fast as 55 watts, but if you have a PD 3.0 charger or a quick charge 4 plus adapter lying around, the Mi 11 supports that too. Then we get support for wireless charging up to 50 watts via Xiaomi's proprietary wireless charger. It feels just like yesterday that Xiaomi was including wireless chargers in the box. Do you guys remember which phone this is? If you do, Leave a comment down below. Let's see how many of you can actually get this right. Okay, now as promised, let's talk optics. We have three cameras to the back. 108 megapixel primary coupled with a f1.9 lens with OIS. A 13 megapixel ultra wide and 5 megapixel macro make up this triple camera array. From the sample images, you can see that the primary does an excellent job. Bocalicious shots thanks to the large sensor. The Mi 11's cameras make pretty much any scene look great. Now these, as you can see, were, were all shot in not that great lighting conditions, either indoors or in the night, and the camera still managed to shine. 
Outdoors under good light, the performance gets even better. Rich detailed images with excellent dynamic range. Just look at the blue sky here. The ultra wide does well to retain the same color fidelity. The optics, they definitely seem to be the Mi 11 strengths. Even the 5 megapixel macro camera did better than I anticipated, under mixed lighting nonetheless. That said, I would have still preferred to see a telephoto instead. This is one area where I wouldn't have minded Xiaomi going the Apple route, being the Apple of China and all that. Now the selfie camera is a 20 megapixel affair and as you can see it's pretty competent. On the video front we get up to 8K at 30 FPS. Uh, the footage is surprisingly stable thanks to optical stabilization. It's also pretty detailed. Now if you, if you want stronger stabilization you're gonna have to drop the resolution to 4K 60 and here electronic stabilization kicks in. The selfie camera maxes out at 1080p but it's decent 1080p so you can't really complain. Overall the optics they seem excellent. Uh, I'd love to do a camera comparison with say the iPhone uh, iPhone 12 or the OnePlus 8T. Let me know if that's something you'd be interested in watching. Now I did miss out on mentioning a couple of things. Let me quickly address that before moving to price. The Mi 11 is one of the first phones to come with the latest Bluetooth 5.2. Now this is Super AMOLED so the fingerprint scanner it's present under the display. It's quite responsive. The haptic feedback here it is one of the best I've used. After a long time, the haptics really impressed me. And with all that said and done, let's talk pricing. This phone starts at 39.99 yuan. That's about 45,000 rupees converted. So it's a realistic ask to expect this phone to come to India at about 50,000 rupees. With the latest Snapdragon 888, seemingly excellent optics, a brilliant Super AMOLED display, one that checks all the right boxes, all in this very sweet head-turning shell, the Mi 11 is Xiaomi's best phone yet. They seem to have put their best foot forward. Now I, I can only hope they end up launching this in other markets quickly. I am excited. I'm going to continue testing this phone out and I will soon have a full review for you guys. Uh, by the way, small reminder, let me know. One, if you want to see a video on the leather variant. Two, if you want to see a camera comparison. If yes, let me know against which uh, phone would you want to see this tested. Three, what are your thoughts on the Mi 11? Love it, hate it, can't wait to get it. Comment below. And with that, we get to the end of this unboxing video. Guys, this is the fourth time I'm doing this voiceover. We had, uh, first time we had mic issues. Second time, uh, I updated the script, but I didn't refresh it. Third time was when the video did not roll. And this is the fourth time I'm hoping this actually uh, goes through. So <laughs> if you appreciate the effort put in, give this video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, turn on notifications by hitting that bell icon if you haven't yet. Thanks a lot for watching. Till next time, my name is Ash. You've been watching C4E Tech and I'm signing off for now. You guys have a great day. Bye-bye.